All right, go ahead, Yandy. Do your thing. That never happened. Go ahead, baby. <laughs> okay, hey, sweet. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 30 of the Last Place Fire Team show. Here we are, big number uh, three zero, ladies and gentlemen. Finally, we made it. Was it? Was that 30 weeks? 30 weeks we've been doing this? Yeah, pretty much. Is that right? Oh, my God, that's crazy. I've been on every uh, single show. Just right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean... Yeah. <laughs> so yes, uh, welcome to episode 30. Thank you for being here with us. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the Game Boy coming to Switch Online, Far Cry 6. It looks great, but is it just more of the same? Uh, which game shouldn't be rebooted or remastered? Uh, will Elden Ring be too difficult to enjoy? And finally, Jungle Cruise is getting a sequel. So those are the stories we'll be talking about on tonight's show. Uh, make sure you stick around to the end of the show. So you can get some uh, some cool information, you know, good stuff. Uh, but before we get into that, let's go ahead and introduce my other two co-hosts. Uh, Chris, how's it going, man? I am very exhausted. <laughs> I'm good, though. Uh, um, nothing really going on. I had an exciting night last night. There was a search helicopter over our neighborhood. Oh. And at one point, the lights flooded the house. And my dog started growling, and she only growls when there's people around. So I stood in the living room and I held a chair. I was I was pissed off at this point because I was like, I'm I'm awake. So you were in fight picture, mode. <laughs> picture me and my boxers, right <laughs> next to, literally literally holding a chair like this, waiting. And I'm looking at all wind. I'm looking at my window and my door. I'm like, whoever's coming through this door is getting the chair to the face, and then I'm tackling like. <laughs> <laughs> they're all getting it i don't care <laughs> like it oh, was it, i was so yeah Damn. and then uh uh for gaming wise uh been playing a lot of apex um i was trying to finish mass effect 3 i think i mass effect myself out because i i just kept going back to back to back so on the third mm -hmm. one i'm feeling a little bit of like uh you know i'm little feeling fatigue. a little yeah so i'm gonna be playing ghost of tsushima and then jumping back on to mass effect um uh, and then I've also been playing 12 Minutes, which if you guys have not played 12 Minutes, definitely recommend. That story is all the way messed up. Like, wow. <laughs> it's really yeah, beat it in 12 up. minutes, though. Uh, did, you cannot. <laughs> did you stream it? Yeah, I played I did? played four hours straight. Wow, okay. Of Dang. trying to get to the end, and I, and I didn't finish. I'm, like, close to the, the end. It's part. supposed to be eight hours, from what I heard. And there's he, different, he, yeah, there's there's different endings to it, too. Yeah. What, what kind of game is it for those who might be watching wondering? Um, it is a top down, uh, um, like kind of murder mystery. Um, so basically, you start off as a guy, you come home from work, wife makes you a cake, uh, and in 12 minutes, or while the 12, like you have 12, you have 12 minutes, right? The top, you hear the clock ticking. Um, at some point, a guy come. you hear the, you hear the elevator to your floor ding comes up, knocks on your door, and, he, and he, hand, he says, police, handcuffs your wife, right? And says, where's the watch? And you're like, what? So there's very little bit that you're getting in the beginning. It's like, where's the watch? Okay, you don't want to talk. Goes over to you, kills you. And then you start over. And you're like, you're in the apartment, and your character's like, like, what the heck? Like, he, he can feel himself. Like, if you get choked out that round, he'll start coughing. And uh, at some point, like, if you try to fight him, you'll end up learning. That was the cool part. You end up learning his moves. So I, I tried to fight him so many times because I got frustrated. So the first time you take a swing, he ducks, clocks you, and then you start over. Next time, your guy knows like, oh, I dunk, I duck here, ducks, guy pulls out a gun, shoots you. <laughs> so next no time, money. yeah. So next time it's just like he would, because uh, I was just like, no way this is going to keep happening. So next time, like the, your character actively does continue to learn because he did duck. He goes and he rushes him, holds the gun up. The guy like elbows him in the face and then knocks him down on the ground, shoots him again. Like it's all this different stuff. So they put a lot into it. Um, Daisy Ridley is your wife. She plays a perfect American, like American accent. I, I could not tell it was her. And Willem Dafoe is the guy who break who breaks into your house. So good. Yeah, it's a wow. it's a it's an all star cast, bro. It's really so it's good. A it's a time loop murder mystery yeah time loop murder mystery cool, uh cool. the the uh, the you know they always have a twist and uh it's just play it it is very different it's on game pass it is on game pass yes oh nice yeah. nice there we go but All i right, enjoyed cool. it 
Nice, nice, nice. What about you, Alan? How you been? What have you been playing? I am good, you know. Life is good. Everything's good. I've been playing Apex, you know, uh, with the new mouse that Yendi has gotten me. And I will say that I have definitely improved. I don't know. I think it's a combination of things. I think I just overall have gotten better in Apex. But I can definitely sense my tracking is a lot better with this mouse. I will say that. It feels... Um, I thought my movement would suffer. That actually has gotten better. Because I guess I'm, like, not as um handicapped i guess on like depending on all those buttons that used to be there and now i mm -hmm. like really have to like okay well focus on pressing this or focus on pressing that so i think my movement has gotten far more better and my tracking has gotten better i mean today i got three w's uh two in mm -hmm. rank so uh yeah it was looking good i'm also playing psychonauts which i've been enjoying every second of that game i'm doing what i've been doing playing one hour at least uh throughout the day Yesterday I played for about two or three because I was uh, kind of hooked. Uh, the, the game is just really well made. The characters are amazing. The storyline is so much fun. Uh, they did a really good job with that game. And I think depending on how other games do, I it might be up there for game of the year for me as of Ooh, right now. Like at least in the top play, five. So yeah. That is also I mean, on Game Pass, by the way. Also on Game Pass. So yeah. I'm definitely going to, uh, you know, I'm excited to finish that. And then we'll see what I move on to. But that's been it for me. Um, have you gone back to your old mouse yet? Like, have you tried to no, like feel not, around or no, see no, no, like, no. oh, wow, this is actually heavy? I'm not. Well, I'm not even going back because I have it right here, but I'm not going back unless I play an MMO. If I do play an MMO, I will go back to that mouse just because those buttons yeah. are like a necessity in MMOs. But. I mean, I use the the mouse on daily use, so I'm just used to it now, like all the time. I and that, like I told Yendi, I I was gonna give it an honest try. And usually, when I'm doing things like this, I don't, I like, do not revert back. I'm just like, nope, stick with it. And honestly, I think I was, I've been less frustrated than I thought I was initially, because like the first mm -hmm. day or the first hour honestly is when i was like oh fuck like that button's not there anymore or like oh damn yeah. this button's not there anymore but honestly after like once i got to day two i was kind of like all right i've like adapted and then by like day four i mean and they're all on my twitch too so by day yeah. four i was like i felt like it was like well i've been using this mouse forever so nice good to hear it man we're gonna do the opposite with chris we're gonna give him a super heavy mouse because he's, <laughs> he's already using a really good mouse so i'll give him a one of my uh, 200 gram mouse here. Just well, he's kidding. actually not using that mouse. He's actually <laughs> using a controller. Yeah, he uses a controller for <laughs> only, only on watching. Guys, uh, hold uh, Chris on. Chris no, here no. <laughs> uses a controller, even though he plays first person shooters on PC. Yes, yes. only, only on, that, hold yeah. on, only on okay. certain games. So mm -hmm. I always played a uh, controller on Call of Duty, right? And Halo. So I use it. On Apex is a different story because I just can't for some reason I just do not feel comfortable on keyboard and mouse on that game. I do play keyboard and mouse, and when I do play keyboard and mouse, I slay. <laughs> all right, I don't want to hear it. Just in Apex is the I only mean, game that I'm just I mean, like, you like, know what? If I want to enjoy this game, I have to. I'm gonna play it on controller because for some reason it's working out for me. So I'm gonna do it that way. That's like buying a Ferrari and say, hey, I want you to limit my speed to 50 miles an hour. I know it's a Ferrari, but it doesn't matter. I still want to only you know want to go 50. You anyway. know what, check, check, check the VODs. Check the VODs. Yendi has been playing with me while I've been on controller. I've been 1v1ing him on some games. Oh. Let, I'll let the videos do the talking. Oh. I mean, I'm not saying anything about what happens between us. I'm just saying <laughs> you're one of those people. Anyways, it doesn't cap uh, anything. <laughs> it's all the same. It's so uh, as, as for me... I, uh, I've been busy into work and uh, playing Halo here with Chris for once in a while. It's been a lot of fun. Every time we play, it's been super fun. Beside that one time we went to rank doubles, that was a oh, mistake. Dude, we got annihilated. Hey, thirsty. <laughs> good to be take a break, please. Go shower. <laughs> Go do something. Because y'all, like, bro, it was like spawn Nate at my feet already. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I will say for it, spawns. It, it was rough. It was rough. Yeah. I feel like I was getting headshotted all the time. And then like, we ran into some, I, I wouldn't call them Smurfs, but they were in the, the social one. And you could tell they were like, you were like, okay, they got they tired. They got tired of um, versing people in ranked and having the same like level. So let's just go like, you know, crush in pubs real quick. 
and came over to pubs and we're all because as soon as we started reversing them i was like they should not even be here <laughs> like, yep yep exactly uh, um black magic asked did anybody get the halo xbox stuff uh, i don't think either one of us got anything no. halo related um no. it looks cool, the control the controller is tempting but uh the xbox itself i mean it's 549 and you get that sick controller but i i just i i, I want to but i'm i'm really spending I'm really saving for um, the the Steam Deck. Um, I mean, maybe whenever I go back to my original job, I'll be able to, you know, splurge a little bit more on some stuff. But also, I picked up a um, uh, oh, I'm trying a new hobby, which is keyboards, and my money is going to be going towards that too. So, yes, yeah. it will. A lot of it. <laughs> all right so before we get into these stories we're gonna do some housekeeping uh if you haven't already make sure you check out our latest youtube video it is the latest lpf debrief with chris and alan here and they're talking about uh the world how the world lost its mightiest hero which what's that episode about it is about is it a spoiler if we say it not i mean really. spoil it's not really but this it just forewarning spoiler one two if you care basically the episode is about if uh the avengers actually didn't assemble so what if nick fury tried to go to the teams and then the the characters just for whatever reason they did not assemble so you can watch Andy, the episode again we out. also recommend we recommend episode two yes. and i also mm -hmm. recommend this episode yeah because <laughs> this episode is like whenever it starts you're like oh they went there cool and yeah. it's it's a very messed up episode yeah where i was talking quickly yeah yeah <laughs> i took uh, i talked to some people at work about it and they were like they were like yeah i didn't i don't know how i feel about it was great because yeah really it was great. great i loved it but they were like yeah <laughs> I, I didn't like what happened and i was like I... <laughs> yeah I, I got to use that that free trial guy for disney plus because it's just it's 30 sitting, minutes i i episode yeah. two and episode three are my favorite so far um agent carter was great it's just that you it's it, it just follows captain america very closely it, and yeah, the, it's just two the two or new episodes are like their own story so yeah gotcha so and what what video are you guys working on for this week what's, what's uh, up next this we week we will have the episode four of what if and we've been doing a great job of not knowing i know it's out there already of what episode four is going to be but i have no idea what it is until the day of so you get full fresh reactions from us because it's like i wake up watch it and then we record and it's uh it's gonna be crazy but also it's gonna be two videos so we got that one and then we also have shang chi because that comes out on thursday so we will be watching that and uh i think that'll go up on friday friday yeah yeah i think we're gonna have one for I guess we're shooting shooting the what if episode for Wednesday, Thursday? I mean yeah, it usually comes out right? usually yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it usually so yeah, comes so out we can we could do Wednesday. Yeah, I mean, exactly. So just, yeah. <laughs> yeah so, but you will get the Shang Chi one on Friday. Yeah. Again, guys, if you if you like those shows in those movies and you don't want spoilers, it is a whole spoil the whole episode is spoilers. So go watch those movies and come back and enjoy them. Also, if you would like to be on those episodes, if you're following with us and you want to be on an episode, uh, let us know. We would totally love to have a guest. We had um, Orlan on uh, the season finale of Loki um, on one of the episodes. So we, we always would love to have a guest on. Yep, yep, for sure. Let us know for real. Uh, going, with, uh, going on with housekeeping, we do have another mouse giveaway. This time it is a Steel Series Rival 3 wireless mouse which is uh, different from our first one, which was Wired, which is still a good mouse, but this one's pretty good too. Uh, and all you have to do is make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube. And once we get to 100 subs on there, we will give that away to a random person, follower. Uh, and then again, as Chris mentioned, if you do want to be a guest on this show, the live show every Tuesday, reach out to us as well if you'd like to do that or do an LPF debrief or just have an idea for a video or something. Let us know. Reach out to us uh, through Twitter either through one of us personally, email team at gmail.com. But just let us know. We're, we're always happy to welcome somebody new in to give us their perspective on, on the stuff we talk about. And speaking of stuff we're talking about, we're going to go ahead and get into our first story. Yeah, uh, done. I'm back. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> this is from, uh, <laughs> from Chris Scolian over at Video Games Chronicle. Uh, Game Boy is reportedly coming to Switch Online really soon. 
uh, he says, sources have reportedly confirmed to Nintendo Life that Game Boy and Game Boy Color games are likely to be added really soon, making them the third retro library available on the service. When the Switch Online service launched in September 2018, Nintendo added a library of 20 Nintendo Entertainment System games, NES, uh, that were playable as part of the subscription. Uh, over time, they've added games to that. It's up to 88 games now. So, uh, yeah. Are you guys... Okay. What Game Boy games are you hoping to play again on your Switch? I can't remember what... Because uh, the Game Boy Color games, all I remember is playing was Pokemon. And then I also had... Um, as a kid, uh, I liked Toy Story a lot. And I remember having this Toy Story game, and it was so hard to beat as a kid. I could never get past... Uh, it was like Buzz Light. It was a Buzz Lightyear level, and you're in the um, that pizza arcade place. I forgot the name of the place, but you're like in one of the arcade games, and you had to get through. I can never get past it. Uh, so the Game Boy games, I, I don't know what I would enjoy to be honest. Um, I don't know if uh, what was that game that everybody wants that Ness is from? Um, Earthbound. Earthbound. Was that a Game Boy game? Uh, it's an NES game. NES game, gotcha. I mean, people have been begging for that for the longest yeah, time. Well, so yeah, I mean, I personally want a GameCube library, but yeah, other yeah, than that, oh, the Game man. Boy Color games. I mean, I will, I will check it out. I did check out uh, the library now. Like, there's a lot of games that um, as a kid I didn't know about. Like, I didn't, I didn't play those games, and it was really cool to go back and and play some of those. So nice, nice, nice. What about you, Alan? What what games? What mobile games are you hoping to play on your Switch? Well, this <clears throat> there's a bunch of. Um, Game Boy games because that was one I had a Game Boy. So there's uh, the original Donkey Kong, which I would love to play again, which is Ooh, the one okay. where you know Mario, you're Mark, well, you're Jumpman and you're trying to save Princess and you're jumping through the barrels and stuff. Uh, Dr. Mario was another great one um, for me. I think obviously, I, I don't know if I would go back and play the Pokemon games. I know I, I'm saying I would. But I don't really know if I'd go back to play with those graphics. I don't think I they'll think be they're... on there anyway, to no, be they're... honest. I don't I think mean, they'll who, put those. Who knows? I, Game Boy, I feel like it's getting... I mean, Nintendo's getting a little pressure because they're noticing that people actually want a, a lot of these games now. And uh, kind of like a side note, that game that said they're going to release on Game Boy Advance had a Kickstarter. I forgot the name of it. And it, like, shattered its record. Like, it shattered its uh, goal, like, in a less than 24 hours so people still have these consoles clearly so i don't and this is something that people want so i think i think they'll put whatever they can make money on it will obviously mean the reselling of the hard copy games might go down a little bit but that doesn't matter because nintendo's not getting the money for those so this for me i feel like nintendo shouldn't worry about any of that stuff and let us play a bunch of games that we want to Another one that I want to play is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Like, those games are amazing. So I, there's a bunch of games that I would play. I, I'm interested to see the list of games that they put on there because uh, this is something, like I just said, we, we've all wanted to be able to use our Switch as a old-school emulator and be able to have those games portable and, you know, do it the, the right way instead of doing it yeah. the other way. So, yeah, the, uh, I just looked up a list. <laughs> Of like, I'm just like, what? What games did I play? The three games I would like to see on there is Pokemon Pinball. I played that a lot. That um, the where'd it go? Uh, Kirby Tilt and Tumble because I played a lot of Kirby. That was my first time playing Kirby ever. And then also the Pokemon Trading Card game was on Game Boy Color, and I enjoyed that yes. a lot. And Link, yes. Link's yeah. Awakening yeah. is on there. Link's too. Awakening's on there, yeah. A good one. Like, mm -hmm. There's a bunch of titles that, like I said, people who've never gotten a chance to, especially the newer generation who hasn't gotten to play this, I don't know how much it will hold their attention, but these are good games. I mean, they're 8-bit, and it's not like the 8-bit genre has gone away, right? So like, people will still know what that looks like and feel that similar. <clears throat> and great gameplay doesn't really... like. Kids don't really stagger away from great gameplay just like we do. Like if it's if the game is good, we'll play it depending on your preference of uh, graphics. A lot of graphics don't matter as much to me, so I don't mind. But another game I would love to play is DuckTales, by the way, one and two. Oh, Pokemon, <laughs> Pokemon Puzzle Fighter. Or no, Pokemon Puzzle Challenge. Oh my God, this game was fantastic. Did you guys play that as a kid at all or no? 
And like it was you didn't you never played it? I always I I never liked the spin-off Pokemon games. I always liked the mainline oh, games. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. And Mega so, Man. So for me, oh. for me it would be definitely Pokemon Crystal yes. because it was the, the best of uh gold silver. Mm-hmm. Um Link's Awakening for sure. I I think I beat that game 2 3 times. Mm-hmm. Love that game. I loved it. Um and then the Pokemon trading card game. So basically all all the Pokemon games. Yeah. Uh the trading card game was surprisingly good for its time and it actually taught me how to play the actual oh, well, yeah. physical card game. So for sure those are those would be the ones I'd be most excited for. And uh I'll go ahead and lead off with the second question here is uh what was the one mobile game that you spent the most time on? Obviously for me that was Pokemon like straight up. The entire series probably if we're talking Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Pokemon Yellow or yeah. Pokemon Silver was my most played. And I had easily a thousand hours plus in just Silver alone because that game was gigantic. So mm-hmm. what about you, um, Chris? What was the one mobile game that you spent the most time on? It was probably Pokemon also. Um, I mean, going into the advanced days, I played the crap out of Emerald because Emerald's my favorite Pokemon. Um other than that it was yeah it was just mostly pokemon and uh i think that look the trading card game because whenever i was a kid i was big into the trading card game because the kids camp i went to um every friday they had they would order like a crap ton of pizzas and it was like pokemon fridays and everybody would bring their cards and they had the mats and everything like that that's where i learned how to play uh the the card game and uh it would just be a whole bunch of kids just playing pokemon it was it was a lot of fun nice what about you ella yeah, one hundred percent. It had to be Pokemon. I mean, if you're gonna add both of those games, I mean, they were also lo- like the longest games we played back then too. Like they did take a longer time than most of those games, and also you would you would always continue to play it, like trading. If you had the 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 back in the day, the link, what was it called? The link the cable system, link, link cable. Yeah, the link cable. You were playing with friends, you were battling, and you were trading. Like you were getting all the Pokemon from Red. And blue and yellow, so like I remember the kids sitting around. We oh, trade Pokemon, and when the when the Pokeball went up, yep, and everybody would waited, like hold like, everybody would hold the cable to see if you could like. <laughs> yeah, so it it was you know Pokemon for sure, and then I mean there was what within our time frame there would have been because for color when did what was color's last Pokemon? It's a crystal, right? Like you said. Uh Ooh. no, I want to say. I feel like because uh, Game Boy, which yeah, well, we'll figure it out. But I feel yeah, like it was a long. Right. There was at least five games, five or six Pokemon's that came out within the the span of Game Boy Game Boy Color. So quite a bit. It was for a sure. Yeah, it was a. So I, I would agree with you one hundred percent. It's Pokemon. All right. So with that, let's move on to story number two, and this is uh, Crystal was the, also yeah was the, was the last uh, one yeah yeah and also. Fun fact, somebody's selling, uh, before we go to the next story, they are selling red, yellow, blue, uh, silver, gold, and crystal. How much do you think they're selling it for? Oh, that's easily $1,000. Andy? $55. 55 Unopened Jesus. or o- o- open? No, they're open. They're open. Okay, so maybe like 800 575 Okay, yeah. They were selling yeah. it for six ninety at first, and they dropped yeah. it to five seconds. It's ridiculous. Anyways, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, 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 that like, the reason those games hold so much value is because you can't play them anywhere else. Yeah, like yeah. actually play them anywhere else. That's true. So. That's true. All right. So next, uh, next story here. We're going over to Video Games Chronicle again. This is uh, Andy Robinson. Uh, Far Cry Six looks stunning, but feels familiar. He says. If you're a fan of past Far Cry games, then you're almost certainly going to enjoy Far Cry, Far Cry 6 a lot. And if you weren't, then this latest installment probably isn't going to be for you. Uh, blah, blah, blah. But otherwise, the latest game is very much an evolution rather than a revolution of the existing series formula, which is hardly surprising considering Far Cry 5's stellar sales performance. But for many, this is a series that feels like it very much needs the latter. However, if you'll forgive us for the downbeat opening, what here, what's here is likely more than enough to please many fans who don't mind a familiar template. So basically, it sounds to me like it's more of the same. And my question to you, Alan, is uh, do you think Far Cry is going the way of Assassin's Creed? And should they take a break from the series for a while? Um, if 
if you're looking at it from like um like our standpoint to where like we want to feel something different then i guess you could say that but if it's working why would they stop like far cry 5 had what their most sales like all all together i believe like it was like their highest selling far cry so why like you know break the mold the people who are going to go play far cry are going to go play far cry like they don't really care that that's one of those um those games that people have that following for and like those followers get all four car games and they enjoy every single far cry game so i don't know exactly how much new people are coming to far cry they might come to far cry because of this story but naturally they're banking on the same people coming to get those games the same thing as assassin's creed like assassin's creed it just accepted what they are and they're they'll give you new tweaks they'll give you a tweak here and there but they know who their crowd are they know who their their fan base is and they know they're going to end up selling a bunch of games so i mean even what was valhalla the last one right that mm -hmm. sold a bunch of copies and people enjoyed it they changed the system but it was still assassin's creed and people liked it so i i, I don't know if they should take a break because i mean i've enjoyed all the far cry games i do feel like a bit of repetitiveness but Am I going to play Far Cry 6? Probably. Like, and am I going to enjoy it? Probably. So I don't know how much or what you would do exactly to change that game's model, but I think it's fine the way it is, honestly. And which Far Cry was your favorite? Oh, man. Far Cry 3, I want to say, was probably my favorite. Far Cry 3 was, was like, I feel like that was the the top of what that game should be. And then like, I feel like everything after three was pretty much a copy of three, but I'm okay with that's that. A, because, that's the pirates one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay, so okay, okay I'm okay. like, so I'm, but I was okay with that. <clears> so <throat> I don't feel like that. I feel like they, they found their mold and they're just going to use it until we get tired of it. And I mean, until probably far cry, maybe six, I mean, seven, eight is when people might be like, all right, we need a new one. But until then they're going to milk it dry. <laughs> Oh, yeah, and there's no doubt about that. Uh, what about you, Chris? Do you think uh, they should take a break from the series? or I don't. Keep... I agree with Alan. Um, I do. This this Far Cry coming out is weird to me because the trailer... Um, who, who's the voice actor that's playing? Giancarlo? Yes. So well, he's not even a voice acting. That's legit him in the game. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah right? <laughs> so I like him a lot, and he has a serious tone, right? He plays a good villain. Um that we've seen many times and with this one it feels weird to see like get that serious tone and then we go into the game and then we have that uh the macarena gun you know what i mean like it it felt very like it has a serious tone with a lot of gimmicks in it and that's what's kind of worrying me i'm still gonna play it but i don't remember um because three was was my favorite and uh, the story behind three, like your friends are on the island, you're trying to find your friends, like, like you know, it's just chaos. I don't remember it being as as there was some gimmicks though. That, I was mean, Far Cry, Far Cry in general always has like that. It has like borderline seriousness, and then it has like a little bit of ridiculous. I think this one is a little bit more amped, but I, I mean, Far Cry. What was the the primal one was like ridiculous. But yeah. like people enjoyed it and <laughs> it, it, it is what it is. I mean, I feel like people just have fun playing those games and being able to take out a bunch of people. And that game is, like I said, it, they know what it is. And I feel like even with a serious tone, you can still have playful manner stuff. And I feel like that game has nailed that border and people will just enjoy it because it's Far Cry. Yeah, I, I'm going to give it a chance because uh, I'm, I'm excited for that storyline uh, behind it um excited to see what i can do as long as it doesn't end up being like uh just cause where they're just like fully into the gimmick side of it to where it just breaks the game <laughs> like it just doesn't look good anymore uh because i recently tried to or not recently a couple months back i tried to play four is that the one with the tornado one. Oh, it's him so yeah hard. but whenever i try to play it was it was but like it just didn't look fantastic it didn't look great to me so um yeah i'm excited to play it uh and we'll see where it, it goes from there <laughs> basically nice and which which far cry was your favorite three All three, three well. was my yeah. three was my first time ever getting into the far cry series and um uh so far i think the guy i forgot his name i want to say it's voss but it, i don't think that's it yeah it is voss, voss. he mm -hmm. is probably my favorite villain in the series so far like nice. a, the, everybody else i'm kind of like oh, okay oh yeah, sure 
I didn't play five though. Or yeah, five is in. Is it like the Montana? Cult? Montana. Yeah, Montana. Yeah, I didn't play that yeah. one. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, uh, for me, I do think I do think they should stop while they're ahead. <laughs> I think we're we're they're making it pretty obvious that they're just rehashing stuff now. It seems just like Far Cry Five, but set in on an island in Cuba. Um, I think this would be a perfect time for them to just, you know, give those developers a break, spend that time on making a game that people actually want, Splinter Cell. Okay, full on. Give it, give a give new up. studio a chance. <laughs> you know, let let them rest and then come out with Far Cry Seven three years from now, reinvigorated, new mechanics, new uh, story. Completely new, you know, just new, straight across the board. Um, because, let's see, my first Far Cry was also Far Cry 3, and I absolutely loved everything about that game. Every single thing. It was so, so cool at the time. The freedom you, you got and uh, the weapons and the island was so beautiful. The story was really cool, too. Uh, then I played 4. I don't really remember 4. That was I think that was set in, like, Nepal or something, right? Yeah. It was that Something one. Something like that. Mm-hmm. I don't know what happened to that. I don't know if I finished that. Uh, but I kind of fell off of it. And then I did buy five. Um, and that was a mistake because I did not like the setting. I did not like the story whatsoever. Yeah. Um, the world looked, it looked good, right? Montana and all that. But I just, the story killed it for me personally. I just, I couldn't get into it. Being in such a... I don't want to say boring place, but like it, it, it is. It's Montana. Like <laughs> I'd rather go to like Columbia or something. You know, it's like. Hmm. But um, but yeah, I do think they should take a break, spend some time just revamping new mechanics or something like what, that. What would you do yeah. to change? What would you do to change it? What would you do to make it different? Go go um do do something along the lines of Primal. That was com- completely <clears throat> different. Mm-hmm. I think redesign. I mean that that era itself. Yeah. Would, you know, I, I didn't buy that personally, but it, it intrigued me. Mm-hmm. Like I almost bought it, but I just Far Cry to me at the time was Far Cry three. So when I saw this, I'm like, what the, the hell are they doing? But I'm I'm a bit more open now. Maybe something set in like medieval times or something, right? Or steampunk, or I don't know, something different, a different setting altogether. Maybe. I don't know. Keep keep the keep the general vibe of of the series, right? Mm-hmm. But just change up every. Would something. you go away from like the open world, like because usually it's like a jungleish ha- habitat or like a field like style yeah. habitat? Would you go into like a city or something? Yeah, I do like um like the steampunk era. I do like a London slash uh, I don't know. Maybe even New York or something way, way in the past. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just just aesthetically way different. I do like I would like it to still be an open world, but in a city would be really cool. Uh, but then you start like getting into the territory of Assassin's Creed, I think, once you get into those kind of environments. Mm-hmm. So and th- this is this is where I see Far Cry going. Eventually, if they keep making these remakes, there's going to be a point where Assassin's Creed and Far Cry are going to interlap somehow. And I wouldn't be surprised if they're in the same universe. That'd be dope. That's you fun. know, I think <laughs> the animus be, will take us to. <laughs> that'd be so to, cool. <laughs> that that's something they could do right there. That's an idea. You know, just get their universe together somehow. But uh, and yeah, you're patenting uh, my, that by the way, Ubisoft right? won't even try to take the idea. <laughs> you wake up, you like they take off the animus, and then yeah. boss is holding you. He's like, "Hey, man, you okay?" And you're like, yeah. "What the fuck." <laughs> Yeah, uh, and my favorite Far Cry definitely is three. Uh, no doubt, no doubt about that. So, yep, yep, yep. All right, let's see here. Oh, for this we have a topic which we haven't had in a while. Mm-hmm. So we'll start with you, Alan. Here, tell me which game shouldn't be remastered or rebooted. Is there something out there that okay? So if it already okay. has been rebooted or remastered, which would would you take it away? What game would you take it's, it away from? Well, it's not out yet. yet. But you guys know what my answer is. Do not, do not reboot or remaster The Last of Us. Just go play The Last of Us. 
Like, I don't understand why they're making this. I We talked about this before. Well, not this direct topic, but I had talked about this being upset about them, even the, the thought behind it of them trying to either remake or reboot or whatever that rumor is. <laughs> don't touch The Last of Us. If you want to play The Last of Us, go play it. On it's it came it, it's not even that long ago that this game is coming out that came out so go play that one and play Last of Us two it's fine I just because you don't that. agree what happened to the character I'm not gonna say the character's name or what happened doesn't mean the game isn't great the game is just as great as one so go play both of those they don't need to be remastered they don't need to be rebooted I mean Last of Us literally came out almost like under five years ago like it's not even that old of a game so i think those games should not be touched i think you can go back and play those now even in today's like day and age with graphics and stuff like that those games hold up really well and i don't think they need to be touched so if that's for sure going to be my thing i don't think you have to worry about those games worry about something that's much older but naughty dog stop not well not naughty dog sony stop trying to milk the cow you got a tv show already you got a deal out of that let you have that you had a really good sales for last of us 2 just just relax the game's fine everyone go play those two games and then report back 2013 was was it was released that's almost what nine eight eight nine years ago exactly so that's not even that i mean that's a long time that's a whole console generation it's been a decade (laughs) and on top of that they had the the um it wasn't like a remaster but they had the updated graphics the upgrade, for, yeah. for for last of us that just came out i like i just don't want them to touch it they just don't need to touch it the game still looks good it still plays well and last of us 2 plays super well so i don't the re- they just don't yeah, need the it. remaster right that that's actually yeah. how i played the last of us it was the remaster so i never played the original but uh yeah it was really really nice at that time uh chris do you have one do you have a game that you would not want to be remastered or a game that already was but you would like to be like no get this back <laughs> call of duty modern warfare or no call of duty world war ii but too late uh but anyway oh. um oh, no. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> bioshock <clears throat> i wouldn't want it to get reboot i would like a remaster like i'd like update, updated graphics but I, I would not want them to reboot it and i feel like that's gonna happen at some point well but, i, I I just don't want I don't think they can touch the story. I feel like that'd be a hard game. I think the only way they could do it is a remaster is bringing it back. But yeah, I mean, unless they want to be redone because t- two one, wasn't a favorite. <laughs> yeah, one story was like phenomenal, but two story, it had a little bit of question mark. Or if they expand more on that uh, Infinite's DLC uh, of Rapture Infinite before. Yeah, yeah. The, a lot of people give that game hate, but that game was. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So probably that, uh, and then another game. I, I had one in the back of my head, and I couldn't remember it. Nope, come back to me on, on <laughs> no. that one. But yeah, Bi- Bioshock for the for the biggest one. Yeah. Okay, okay. For me, for me personally, I, I don't think I don't <coughs> think Demon Souls should have been remastered. I think they should have kept that as like a one off for the PlayStation uh, Three because. It, it, that's what spawned Dark Souls. And if you guys never played Demon Souls, it's mm-hmm. I think a much harder version. Harder. I that is like freaking that is that's like torture. Torture. That's yeah, not, it's not like actual gameplay. Like you don't have you don't play that game to have fun. Like <laughs> yeah, I think that's one of those games that you just leave alone and just talk about it with friends and you know just leave it as a like a not, not a historic thing but yeah. something you look back on and think about fondly or. The opposite of that. Of oh, course. I got one. I got another one. Yeah. Undertale. <clears throat> Never touch Undertale. Undertale. Ever. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> don't even think about it. Just leave it the way it is. Yeah, I don't think, I don't think they would. That, that, uh, like, no, I'm just saying, but you know. But no, yeah, I agree with, with that, Yendi, because also, like, I feel like with all these remasters and reboots, like, what ends up happening also is like, when people fix the game, I feel like some games j- are meant to still be broken so that you can experience the time that people had with those games being broken, right? So, like, mm-hmm. if there was, like, one of those glitches, because <clears throat> you know how we didn't have updates back then, so if there was a glitch in the game, that was it. Like, you were stuck with those glitches. So I, I do agree, like, people should go back and play those and, like, feel that, like, 
the same feeling that we had when we played those games and those old school glitches and those and things like that. I mean, if you don't want to play them, I get it. I get the graphics can be a little harsh sometimes, but I don't know. There's something about those times and something about talking about those games back then where you're like, man, this game was like, you know, when I played it, it was like they had none of this stuff. And I, I miss that like mystique for games. And I feel mm. like with all these remasters and reboots, we don't we've lost that. You know what I mean? And it it stops people from wanting to go check those older games out, which is why, like, even though I give Nintendo a lot of crap about it, I kind of understand wanting people to play on like keep those things relevant because like the Pokemon games are a perfect example. Like those game cartridges are always going to be relevant because Pokemon is very rare to release like, you know, the things on the store or something like that. So that game that you have, that cartridge that you have is always going to be sacred. And I think Nintendo likes that idea of keeping those cartridges sacred. And I think that's one of the reasons they don't do it. Not that they should continue to do that, but I do understand from that, that from that standpoint. Mm-hmm. For me, a... I think okay. yeah. Uh, I for me, I think one of, <laughs> one of the things that has to has to happen in order for one of those games to be okay to be remastered is to have the original dev team do it. Yes, right. I want them to put, have their hands in it, their the input. I don't want these younger mm-hmm. people coming in. Hey, let's add fucking sliding to this fucking uh, Elder Scrolls game. <laughs> you know, I don't want that. I want the original people who knew what they wanted. They had a vision in their head. And maybe they had some other stuff that they couldn't put in because of time constraints or something added on as something extra. But I think that's the only time I would like uh, a remaster. I, I mean, I don't I don't ask for any remaster that just happened. They're just throwing at us for, you know, cash grabs and shit. Mm-hmm. I mean, not saying that there haven't been good ones. There have for sure. Massive but uh, yeah. OK, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, Mass Effect One needed that. That that one was harsh. Mass Effect also, One quickly became. I, I've been meaning to say that. That became my favorite. Like yeah. I, I played two. I was playing through two, and I'm like, yes, two is two is still great. It's probably one of my favorite games ever. But one was like up there with it. Like oh, after yeah. I was able to play one, I was like, this well, is a lot. I'm really enjoying it. One story was phenomenal, and yeah, it, 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 it just, just got lost in the gameplay. Yeah, but when you played that gameplay back then, it didn't matter. It was still amazing. It just didn't hold up in time like some games do. So that one I do understand, but still, go back and play the original. <laughs> uh, yeah. But uh, since Alan brought up glitches and stuff, do you guys have a favorite like glitch that you can remember that you used to do in games? Missingo I- and Pokemon Yellow. Yeah, what is it? Missingo. Missing missing number? Missingo, yeah. as I used to call I've it. I've never yeah, That's heard what of everyone that. called him, Missingo. Yeah. He would che- what? Basically, he would be like a... It would look like a piece... Like I don't even know how to explain what it looked like. But, we broke the game. Yeah, we and broke it, the it, game. We, we were able to duplicate stuff and duplicate Pokemon and like have Pokemon over like 256... Yeah. It what? Was, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Rare candies. It was also like that's what you would do to get your like a bunch of rare candies. So you uh-huh. could a hundred. You, like, you could always repeat it. You just have to do a certain amount of steps. You have to surf somewhere. You had to go down a, shore, a shoreline. I could probably yeah. redo it still. Yeah. But yeah, all the time, Pokemon yeah. Yellow. When I found that out as a kid, oh my god, it was the best. Thing I get up in a whole new world from like I don't yeah. have to train anymore. I can yeah. just wear candy. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, that's for me. Look was that before? Thing. Was that before they did the stats thing for rare candies? Before then, Pokemon didn't have as many stats. They yeah. only had attack, defense, special attack, attack and, a special and speed. No, they didn't have special yeah, defense. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, so that's it. And then I think in gold is when they added uh, different defense, stats. Yeah. So um, that's all. And, and those Pokemon games, Psychic was overpowered, and they couldn't do anything about it. Nothing. <laughs> So that that yeah. would be it for both of you guys. Is that a glitch? Yeah, one hundred. Yeah, I for remember me, doing the first day I did it. I remember vividly. I was like, I did it, and like I was just in there, like getting all. And then I didn't tell any of the my classmates about it. So I just came back with like level one hundred Pokemon, like <laughs> every Pokemon type, and I knew what Pokemon they had. So I just had the you know the, the counter. <laughs> so when people would drop their Pokemon first, I was like, all right, cool. and then just like they were like, what the. <laughs> and it, just, it, was, it was a beautiful thing uh, yep, yep. for me it would be the uh because i'm probably gonna go try to do it in master chief collection but ascension holds mm-hmm. a special place in my heart where you can you used to have to go on on a there was a ramp and you would have to crouch and walk into the corner 
and like you would i think you would crouch walk for like 10 seconds run up to a certain path uh on a cliff jump and you had to hit this crack on a panel perfectly and you would super bounce yeah. above the map and get on top of like the tallest tower there you could see everything so, i remember yeah. that yeah so um i remember me and my friends like anytime we did um you know we're playing free for all and stuff like that like that would be the spot to hold everybody because everybody was just trying to see like oh my god i can do this real quick like well two other people are fighting you had one guy like one mississippi two mississippi three Ooh. like you know trying to get to that bouncing point so they could get up top and and be the king basically so yeah but i'm probably gonna try that later on because as soon as you brought up glitches ascension popped up right in my head and i was like Man, I wonder if I could do that Master Chief collection. <laughs> I, I could. They probably left that in there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, who knows? All right. Uh, let's see. We're at 46. Perfect. All right. So on to the next story here. This one's about Elden Ring, and it is from Michael McWhorter. McWhorter <laughs> from Polygon. Um, the, 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 the Elden Ring might be from software's Breath of the Wild. The developer's vast new open world game offers new levels of player choice. Uh, this is a fantasy land so massive that it requires an in-game map, something that past from software games have never offered. Players have had to memorize the worlds of Dark Souls, Bloodborne, and Sekiro by exploring their dungeons and castles repeatedly, building up those maps inside their brains. But in Elden Ring, the lands between, which is the name of the world, uh, the game's landmass, they'll be able to place markers on a map and receive guidance on where to go next. As players adventure through the densely packed lands between, they'll encounter dungeons, giant castles, and the occasional dragon bolting out of the sky to attack them. Kind of like Skyrim. Uh, quote, we went to the lands between to be, f- uh, we want the lands between to be filled with threats and discoveries, said from software producer Yashu- uh, Yashuhiro Kiao- Kitao. Sorry if I m- butchered that. In the video presentation with Polygon, who described the game's large map as not just big for the sake of being big. In that video presentation, From Software showcased its diverse wintry plains and autumn- autumnal forests, a flooded city, and a decaying, swampy land. So, gentlemen, my questions for you are... We'll start with Chris. Uh, are you excited to explore this world? Chris? I'm afraid to get this game in general to be honest me um, too <laughs> like it looks like it's like i'm so, glad it's coming out for those people but like it, it's it looks okay, like so too much for me i'll go ahead and ask <laughs> the second question just so you can answer it there okay so being being a from software game are you worried about the harder difficulty lessening your enjoyment of the open world a little bit because I suck at those kind of games. Well, uh, for me, for for those kind of games, I'm terrible. And uh, if if it's gonna take me, it it all depends on like if I'm doing the first quest and it's taking me like three or four hours to beat because I keep dying. And I'm like, man, I got this whole like I'm only in this little dot of the map, and I still have all this to go. And a dragon's gonna attack me out of nowhere. <laughs> I'm good. I'll wait. <laughs> like you know, so um. But I mean, uh, that does, it's also depending on uh, I'm whenever this game comes out, if it is too hard for me, uh, watching people play is going to kind of encourage me to be like, you know what, I can get better at this and, and try to learn uh, uh, how how these games are played. Um, but like I said, it just seems like a lot of content, uh, which is great. But like, it's the same thing with Skyrim, like Skyrim, I didn't really finish because there was just so much going on and and i'm a multiplayer guy i like playing multiplayer with my friends if i can explore with you guys great but other than that I'm, I'm i'm excited to see uh through other people's eyes what the world's gonna look like but i'm still on the fence of buying it so nice nice all right for, for me i'll go i'll go next and then let alan for me i uh i am kind of excited but i also think that this game will be too difficult if you know, we're looking at from software and what they're known for, and which is difficult games, right? Uh, part of the draw of open world games for me is accessibility, being able to just relax. And I like very chill, laid back worlds, um, kind of like Breath of the Wild, perfect example of that. Uh, it doesn't limit you in any way. You could get killed by uh, monsters out in the world, but you can also avoid them. And they don't usually one shot you, which I feel like would happen a lot in Elden Ring. I mean, I'm just guess, uh, estimating, you know, I'm guessing well, they right had now. One, so. They had one, uh, I forgot what they're called, the Lionels? Yes, 
But those you could also avoid those. those. Yeah, you could, but if they spotted you, that was it. They were coming. Yeah, <laughs> they were like, no, I, you're I, mine. <laughs> I, I found one of those before knowing what they were, and that was a big mistake. But uh, <laughs> I, I do think it'll be hard to based off of their history but i think if they add a story mode difficulty and i can just breeze through the game at my pace without having to worry about losing my stuff or you know getting to the next checkpoint and stuff like that then i think i'll be okay with it but the other big thing that would you know make me shy away from it is the uh the atmosphere the aesthetics I don't like the dark worlds. I don't like the dreary lands and stuff like that yet. But I haven't seen all of this world. So I'm still holding judgment there. But I think right now, this is not. This will not be a game that I buy day one. I'll probably see what kind of you know terrain they have. Uh, is it varied or is it just dreary and dark the entire way through? Because I don't want personally be spending that many hours in a world like that. So... Oh, I mean, it's um, it's specifically for those people that are playing that played Bloodborne and Sekiro and stuff like that. They're they're just like, hey, we want that same game, just open world. Yeah, I mean, like I, those... I want to get wrecked as I try to explore the world <laughs> all the time, and th- that's what this game is for. It's for those people. For people so, like us, we're gonna stick to Breath of the Wild. Oh so yeah, Skyrim. Count, count me out. <laughs> all right, Alan, what what do you what do you think? Are you excited? <laughs> you think this will be too hard of an open world game? I love everything about this game and I love everything about those games because at the end of the day, you don't have to play it if you're scared, if you're a punk. You know what I mean? This game is meant for people who want this challenge. Now, is it a bad business model? Yes, because you are definitely alienating people who don't want to play difficult games. But what they have proven is that it works and there is a market for this crowd and i am among that market i I will get pissed i get upset but then it makes me really uh criticize what i'm doing and really reflect on how i could do things better and a lot of those things that you learn in those games essentially just makes you a more patient video game player and then the downfall for me on other about that stuff is games that other games just seem so easy because when you go through the stress and like that that tough like environment and those worlds you're like man when you play something else it's just like oh this is cake like i can just hack and slash everything so with that game you got to be very methodical it is a it is a like um it is heavy like to play those style of games and actually like enjoy them because you are like very hesitant to do things you're always error on the side of caution like you're like maybe i shouldn't fight this guy right now and like but it I love having tough boss battles and I love those, the games that make me really think about what I'm doing when I'm fighting something. Like I don't want to just like hack and slash all the time. I want, that's why I love, I've beaten all God of Wars on God mode and hard mode because like, I love being able to like not hack and slash, but I do like to beat the game first before I do that. But for this, these games, I know what I'm getting myself into and they're just fun. Like for me, even though I get upset at them, I do like what it, 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 I feel like it makes me a better gamer when I, I play these games and like really enjoy those worlds. And I think they're going to have a good like lore to the world, even if it doesn't have a story mode, which they tend to do for these games anyway, where they're just like, it's a lot of books and a lot of like reading and exp- like, that's how they explain like the world and the lore. And I think it's going to be more of that, but we'll see. I mean, George R. R. Martin's supposed to be on it because he's not, you know, writing the last book of Game of Thrones. Yeah, mm-hmm. I said it, George. Yeah. So <laughs> he's supposed to be do you know heavily, but like it's not like his full story. So I'm I'm interested to see what he brings to the table. Also, like what kind of world, uh, and for the medieval the like that. I mean that style that world is is all up my alley. Like that's the kind of settings I like. I love those dark settings especially for style games like this, because it's supposed to feel like a dredge going through these worlds. And I know it's not like the most, uh, you know, the most enjoyable to like be in a dark and heavy world like that. But that's what the game is meant to do. It's meant to drag you down and feel like the pain of your character. So I'm, I'm into like, like those style of role players because it, it makes me feel like I'm there, even though if it's like not, you're not there to have like the best of time. So I'm excited for it. I can't wait. To me, there's also this thing where in the past, I used to love difficult games, right? Because, and I'm talking about before the internet was big, yeah. those kind of difficult games, because 
when you beat a difficult game back then, you the achievement. there was clout, right? Mm-hmm. You, you could tell you, you tell your friends, and they'd be like, "No way, no way, yeah. you did that." You yeah. know, because you had nothing else to really spend much of your time on. M- multiplayer wasn't really big no. then, so you have to have, have patience, and yeah. and these games brought about that sense of accomplishment that now these multiplayers give you. You know, whenever you want, pretty much all these BRs, that's all they are. They're just they give you a quick uh, shot of uh, adrenaline if yeah. you win and that's it. You're done. But back yeah. then it used to be beating a really difficult boss or yeah. just getting or through a game. The but, hardest level. But, but, yeah, now, but also trying to unlock the like, cause it, you know, like kind of like Halo with the legendary stuff. Every time you beat the game on legendary, you had a secret ending that nobody mm-hmm. else saw. And uh, like, yeah, that's a great example right there. And, yeah, that used to be like the biggest thing. It's just like, yo, there's a secret. I'm going to be like, what? Yeah. And then you were trying. Oh, I remember my friends trying to play for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours trying to get past like one level. Just like, yeah. Yeah, all right, man, I got to go home. I'll, I'll, I'll come back tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. I'll be up at 12. We'll, we'll, we'll run it then. All right, cool. <laughs> and trying to play that yeah. same level, you know, one of the things <laughs> yeah. that mainly got me into those two was um, I when the, the achievement system. Because I remember when achievements came out, and I was like, "Oh, I want all of these." And I'll never forget. I don't know if my friend Nick is watching, but we played Gears of War on Insane, <laughs> and General Ram on Insane was legit a nightmare. Like he was one of the hardest bosses I had ever played. And we, the good thing about it, it was co-op. But man, when we beat that and got those achievements, and now Xbox shows you like the percentage of people who beat the game on like the hardest level or whatever. I'm sure when my me and my friend Nick beat that, we had to be in like the top 5% because it that game was so difficult on insane that like I felt like no one had that achievement and I remember me and uh it was only him and I on my friends list who had that achievement. We like Yendi said it was like clout like everyone's like, "Damn, you guys beat that on insane?" like and it just it felt good having that like that sense of accomplishment and i feel like that's what happens with the like demon souls and stuff like once you pass a boss you feel like oh my god like i'm like you could you could be done right there and then be like you know what i'll come back to it for like 3 days because you worked so hard to get there and you finally got there and it 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 makes it worth it so i'm excited for me i, I definitely think it's one of those things where i'm spoiled now like i have instant gratification at my fingertips with all these multiplayer games. I just want I a good story. The, I don't have the time to go and spend three, four hours on one thing in the game, on one boss. I don't... I'd rather spend that some doing something else that's, you know, like Destiny. I said, instant gratification. Destiny, which uh, I am getting back into. Oh. Me, and, me and Ryan are getting back into. it as well i, I think like um we i mean i'm to. down i'm really gonna get head, head head first into it when the witch queen comes out next year um so i kind of don't want to spend my time on it now because i know i'll spend money which i don't want to well you're gonna be on new world anyway so yeah you know, right? yes exactly i so excited for that i'm uh, really I hoping that that game's not disappointing to you I-, <laughs> I already bought it so you know it's it's a problem that i have i have yet to open biobutin alan Oh my gosh! You I still have yet to buy it. I yeah. haven't even opened it up once. Oh Return it. Goodness. I don't think I can. It's either two weeks or two hours. Yeah. So, all right, let's go ahead and go to the last story here. Uh, Jungle Cruise, ladies oh. and gentlemen, one of my favorite movies of the year. Actually, I think the only movie I've seen in theaters <laughs> this year. It is. Yes, I, I think it is. Yes. Uh, Jungle Cruise is in talks with, uh, well, they're in talks for a sequel. Um, I think it's like, so this like is, actually happening. Like, I don't even think it's, it is. I'd be yeah, surprised it was if confirmed. It's, not. Yeah. it's confirmed. Nice. So this is from Justin Kroll over at Deadline. Uh, with Disney's Jungle Cruise crossing the 100 million marker at the domestic box office over the weekend, the studio is moving forward with a sequel to the film with Dwayne Johnson and Emmy Blunt on board to return. Sources also confirmed to deadline, uh, to deadline that 
Huame Colette Sarah. I'm, I I know I didn't say that right. Uh, it's also Hua, Hua I'm just guessing. I'm not even Wait, looking at the article. It's probably, it's probably like Jamie or something. It's also signed on as director, while Michael Green is back to write the script. So, <laughs> so I think I think all three of us here really really enjoyed Jungle Who's. I think me probably the most because I was surprised by it. It was a kid's Indiana Jones, as I read somewhere just now. Um, and that's exactly what it is when you think about it. It's a kid's version of Indiana Jones. I mean, not that Indiana Jones was um, uh, was adult, really yeah. adult, yeah. I mean, but uh, it it depends on how you look at it now. See, when, oh, I guess some of the scenes with yeah. the with the ladies, yeah. But uh, but yeah, I I am super super sh- actually surprised that they're making a sequel because I feel like that's one of those movies that just should end there because it's based off of a ride, you know. Um, and I feel like if they take it somewhere else, they have to bring the boat along mm. and make it mesh. Um, mm. what? 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 <laughs> Do no, I, I keep going. <laughs> oh, so, um, but I will watch it if Good it's point. everybody's the same, same cast and everything. It's just, I, I'm very curious as to what the setting would be. Uh, and I'll start, I'll, I'll answer my own questions here. Uh, I asked, what mysterious place, myth, or adventure would you expect to see in a sequel? El Dorado, Atlantis, steampunk era. Um, I have no fucking clue. I don't know where they could take this. I have, I have no idea where they could take this. I could see them going something with Atlantis or uh, Christmas Island. Or Sorry, not, not Christmas Island. Um, what do they call it? The island with the Easter egg. Easter Island. Easter Island mm-hmm. with the big big heads. Big yeah. brown rockheads i could see them Stonehenge? diving into huh? no not stonehedge easter easter island okay, with the I'll big uh giant rockheads uh oh. something around there i have no i have no clue i don't know what they could do that's original that indiana jones or tomb raider hasn't already done or uncharted um uh i don't think it should get a sequel to answer my own question i think it was fine i think it was one of those movies that should just ended there mm-hmm. but you know fucking money talks man you know they're gonna keep yeah. they're gonna keep churning it out and i think disney will eventually milk this property until we hate it because just that just is the thing alan um so as much as i enjoyed the first one i was actually surprised that they even thought about making a sequel not because of just the way it ended but also because they, they haven't actually profited off this movie yet i don't know what the number of Disney Plus things are, but I know in the box office it hasn't made that money back. And essentially, with movies, you have to make almost double what the movie cost. And this movie cost two hundred million dollars. So I it don't is. like Damn. yeah to make. And I mean, it, it's made one hundred and eighty box office, which means I know there's no way it made one hundred seven in Disney Plus. So. They kind of made this movie at a loss. So for them to be making another one seems interesting to me because I feel like you you can't lower that budget unless you change this like the scenery. And I feel like it has to be in a jungle because it's a jungle cruise. So I feel like that also limits where you get to go. So I'm interested to see it. I think I love The Rock and I love Emily Blunt. So I, and if you're bringing everyone back, I, I'm sure I'm going to enjoy the movie. I'm sure it's not going to have an issue. I'm just more interested to see it from the the money aspect, which you know you do. You like Emily Blunt is not cheap, and neither is The Rock. So unless you had them pre-signed a contract to to do multiple, which I know they do a lot of the times, uh, I find it very interesting that they plan on bringing them back and then to make another one. So hopefully, uh, maybe it was fun to work on. Maybe they made money somewhere else from it, or I don't know, but. We'll see what happens. I, I'm, I will go see it first day, just you know, and I will probably love it. So I'm here Black for it. If you want to make us just a movie for us? Black Magic said, "Way more excited about the Lion King prequel." Chill out there, man. No, no. relax. And just real quick before <laughs> Chris down. gets in, before Chris gets into his answers here. Egypt, it make it only makes sense. They're gonna do something with Egypt because last time we saw them, they were in London. They're going to take the Jungle Cruise boat through the Atlantic into the Nile River, and then some bullshit is going to happen. Huh? Where's the boat? It's going to go from the Amazon all the way to Atlantic, Mediterranean <laughs> Sea, down into the Nile River, and then Pharaohs, ancient Egypt. Okay. Boom. Well, 
All right, Chris, take it <laughs> so away. So we use the boat to get into this. The boat's yeah, in the yes. movie, so we can go on Jungle Cruise. <laughs> like, <no. Yes. laughs> Sounds like this movie's not going to work, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how this is going to work. Is, uh, I'd be surprised. I, I'm, um, I'm, I, I don't think it's just Disney that wanted to do the sequel. I think, uh, I think The Rock has something to do with it, too. Uh, I think he, whenever he has like success, because he, whenever he has a, a huge successful project, he wants to continue doing that project. Um, as far as milking it, I think it's only going to get another movie, and that's it. I don't think they're going to make a third Rock, and fourth one. Um, the Rock wants this because he's going to get that Disney money. That's what the yeah. Rock. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, just... but um, but also uh, as far as story, I'm thinking like Costa Rica area, and they'll create their own little thing. Um, they're just not going to have, uh, the, the twists and turns that this movie had, uh, you know, finding more about the rocks character and, 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 uh, having a reason of why they were in the jungle and stuff like that. They don't have that drive. So whenever they go to, whenever, whenever they make the sequel, it's just going to be another, there's no surprise or anything like that. It's just going to be another treasure hunt. So, which I'm here for, I I like treasure hunting movies so they can do it. But, um, but yeah, I think it's going to be another. Uh, I think they'll be you, like Costa Rica, maybe Atlantis. I can see them doing. But. Do you think El Dorado's too close to the original story? It's too close to like finding that lost city because that's pretty I much feel what like, they were. Yeah, I feel like El Dorado was like I feel like the the first one was El Dorado. To be honest, yeah. Um, okay. So it'll be hard to do. I mean, it doesn't have to be. Uh, they can call it Jungle Cruise too, and maybe they'll have the boat, and maybe they won't. We'll see. Electric Boogaloo. But, Jungle Cruise 2, Electric Boogaloo. <laughs> Listen, man, I just don't know what you do from here. Like, I I, I don't get it. Or that but... city, or that, you know how he leaves, right? Because he doesn't take the boat with him. They just go to London, right? That we know. They can yeah, make that so shit up. I, you know? Maybe, maybe, <laughs> maybe the, the town that he's from is under, the town that he built. Like, there, a new spirit came, and it's under attack, and they're going back to save. I got it. The... A plane boat. A oh, boat plane. Gosh. And that's why yeah. Yendi fixes mouses and he will never direct <laughs> okay, a movie. Like, like, I will say this. This also could be a reason they're remaking this is because it uh, because of the way it got released in the box office. Because I do think if this was released in like normal times, like without a uh, pandemic out there, I do think it would have definitely made its budget. And, and then some, I think it would have made anywhere from $600 million. So I think... That's what they're looking for. And what Disney is doing, and if you noticed, uh, these movies, all the movies that have come out during these um during the pandemic and have released on Disney Plus simultaneously are also getting sequels. Because Corella's getting a sequel also, because that didn't do as well in the box office. And they made like they sold and they're bringing Emma Stone back. So I think maybe this could also be something to make up for it releasing on Disney Plus so that they can have it have like a real movie like uh like it can really come out during that and probably show both on one and make some money that way too Mm -hmm. so get vaccine days so we can get to that state people no (laughs) he is not lying (laughs) i want to be able to go to the movie theaters without wearing a mask again damn it (laughs) um all right i believe that will do it for the show tonight um you guys have any any finishing Finishing thoughts you want to talk about? Any stories we talked about? No? Nope. Oh. Just be sure to check out our video uh, this week, both of our videos this week. Um, I will probably be streaming Apex and uh, I'm trying to get the VR thing set up too. So, yeah, keep an eye out on our Twitter and uh, everybody's individual Twitter. It's here on our Twitch channel. Uh, be sure to give us all a follow and LPF a follow. So if we go live randomly, you guys know, and uh, you can join in on the fun. Yeah. Alan, are you good? Yeah, pretty much the same thing. I stream pretty much every day now. So if you guys want to come watch me, you know, merc some fools in Apex and uh, carry some people like Yendi and uh, Chris. Oh, you know, I, will, <laughs> I will do that. So <laughs> come check us out. But no, seriously, uh, if you guys have a friend, that hasn't subscribed yet, make sure they do that. Like those videos so we can get this, uh, you know, thing rolling and we can give this mouse away. So we just need 100 subs. And I know everyone has at least one friend. So if we have 72 subs and you tell at least one friend, then we should get, you know, double like 73 the 72. subs. Exactly. Let's do it. Let's make it happen. 
<laughs> and with so, that, no. ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us on our 30th episode. Uh, hopefully, we will see you here for the 40th and 50th and 100th. Um, so thank you again for joining us for the 30th consecutive week. And we'll see you next Tuesday at 8 p.m. here on Twitch. Fire team, last place fire team out. Ha <laughs> ha